NFL Best Game Previews Week Number 3. Or Trace, as I usually would say. Uh, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can watch and wager on these games at any of Tunica's five, soon to be six, incredible sports books. Horseshoe, Gold Strike, Sam's Town, Hollywood, First Jackpot, and opening on Friday, September the 28th at 11 a.m., the sports book at the Fitz. You can get more information over at tunicatravel.com. As you can see on our lovely screen behind us, Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Our picks contest is up over at winningcureseverything.com. You will get all kinds of prizes and wonderful things. Sign up for free. Just put in your email, put in your Twitter handle, put in your name, make your picks, win some stuff, win some cool stuff. We uh, Do you approve of the prizes? Sure. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, uh, like I said, you can do that over at winningcureseverything.com. This is the NFL Best Game Previews. You ready to jump into it? Yeah. I'm going to count on you a lot on these. Come on. We're going to start with the Monday night game. I like the Monday night game. Steelers at the Bucks. This is the best game of the weekend. Rare that Monday night gets that. Opened up, Steelers minus two and a half. It is now a pick'em. Over-under is 53 and a half. Is that right? Is it yeah, got it on there? That's 53. Okay. Uh, Monday, 7.15 p.m. on ESPN, Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. Tell me your thoughts. Ryan Fitzpatrick, averaging five touchdowns a game, going up against the defense, averaging giving up four or five touchdowns a game. Yeah. I. What's so hard is, is we all believe that Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to come down to earth at some point. It's also very difficult to believe that the Steelers will start off three games into the season and be winless. And have no wins. I, I will tell you this. Uh, as far as points scored, Tampa Bay is number two in the NFL right now, and Pittsburgh is number nine. They are number one and number two, Tampa Bay and Pittsburgh, in total yardage so far this season. And to top it off... Well, you know the reason why Pittsburgh has all those yards and not that many points. They're playing comeback. No. What? Turnover. Turnover. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was against uh, uh, Cleveland. Turnover. Yeah. Um, number 25, Pittsburgh. Number 31, Tampa Bay, as far as total defense goes. So yeah, I don't that's, think either one of them are stopping anybody. Number 27 and number 28 in points allowed. It's It's... Obviously, bad defenses against good offenses, and you know that normally means points, right? Uh, we can talk all day about uh, Antonio Brown and whether or not he wants to be traded, and Le'Veon Bell, whether or not he's coming back. There's something like, smoking in the garbage can over no, there. I, I, and I am with I'm you. I'm just letting you know it, it that, seems, that it's, it's smoldering, and, and I smell smoke. There are way too many people on – the Bucks on this one right now. Like too many people that are doubting the Steelers. It it's that's like, what don't get me wrong. Me. I'm not gonna bet a, a side on this one nope. because I, I don't trust any of it. Nope. Um but it just it's got that feel like the Cleveland thing, right? Like when Cleveland Ben it, Roethlisberger on the road, I'm I'm not touching at all. If anybody's gonna turn the ball over and give a game away, it's gonna be him. Yeah. And and if Fitzpatrick can you do it one more week, one more week Man, I don't know. I don't know. I think he's. There are props in Vegas. I, I don't know if there's props in Tunica on this. To, I want badly to be on Tampa Bay. And depending on how I go throughout the week, I might be on Tampa Bay pretty heavily just, the, just to have some fun. The uh, the odds for Fitzpatrick keeping the job in week four. Minus like 400? It's It was up to 500. So I don't think Jameis is getting his job back. Uh, what, what do they call it? Uh, Wally Pipped? Yeah. He's getting Wally Pipped? Yeah. Fook Jameis. Yeah. Who's Jameis Winston? Who's Jameis Winston? Uh, let's move into game number two. Interesting matchup here. Okay. AFC, NFC. Chargers at the Rams. This Rams is, are this minus is, seven. Yeah, this is the best game on Sunday. Over, under is 48. It's Sunday, 3.05 p.m. It's on CBS. It's at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Phillip Rivers against uh, against that Rams defense. I mean, I, I I don't I don't know what to make of Philip Rivers right now because I think that the Chiefs are really really good and I think that the Bills are really really bad and I think that the Chargers are somewhere in the middle in the middle they're somewhere in the middle 
Yeah, I mean they. they and did. the Rams have played two teams that we don't think are good at all. Yeah, they're they're not. So exactly it's really great. hard to just say are the Rams going to just moonwalk into the Super Bowl? I don't know. This is going to be a tough. Te- this going to be a tough test. Of the what Rams. do you make of the fact that the Rams have only gotten two sacks on sixty nine dropbacks when they've got, you know, Indomitian Sue and uh, uh, Aaron Donald? I, I think both the teams they played, they were playing the run a lot. And I think that's because the receivers didn't scare them. They signed two extra cornerbacks, beefed up that DB. And I think they're just saying, we're going to play the run. We're going to let the quarterback sit back there and try to throw the ball. And we still they, don't think they can beat Because us. they can't. Yeah. They can't. So, um, one place that they have an inefficiency, I guess, the, the Raiders exposed, which is their linebackers maybe can't cover a decent tight end. But I don't really know, like – I don't think Antonio Gates is going to do anything special. He just doesn't have the talent. He doesn't have the legs under him. I'm I'm really curious to see how Mike Williams does. He has been the best receiver for this team and has not been Keenan Allen. I, I well now a lot of that's hard to judge because the Bills game got out of hand so quickly. Yet why why get Keenan hurt when he's been injury prone? But I'm curious to see how they cover. How they covered Mike Williams. The analytics say that this should only be a five or six point yeah, line. Yeah, I, I absolutely. Think uh, this there is be a no game. real home field advantage. No, here. it's seven. It's seven and a half points. And um, is it seven and a half at uh, at Gold Strike now? It's no, no they've it's only seven. Got it seven. They've uh, but but seven. the juice on it is even for seven. Yeah. So even they are are thinking like, eh, yeah. maybe take the Chargers here. That's right. Um, yeah, I mean the Chargers at at plus seven minus one twenty. Uh, I'd probably roll that way, but man, the Rams have looked really, really good here lately. I agree. Really good. No, I completely agree. I mean, yeah. you get you get the best quarterback in the matchup, right? Yeah. I mean, absolutely. nobody's going to debate golf over Rivers. No, nah, no, nobody. Now, not not now right you're now. You're betting against cool coaches, though. I mean, I also think Anthony Lynn could easily be like first coach fired, and That's you're going up true. against maybe the coach of the year. So maybe. I mean, it, obviously they they bought him a, a good team. You know, <laughs> that's right. Well, but he was that way last year, and they he, didn't he buy was, him a team. Yeah, he was so. really good last year. Uh, game number three: the San Francisco 49ers at the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, Chiefs are favored by seven. The over under is fifty six and a half. Sunday at noon on Fox. It's at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri. Patrick Mahomes is playing out of his freaking mind right now. He is like the the dream quarterback for Andy Reid. Right, ten touchdowns in two weeks. Never been done before in NFL history. Uh, the Chiefs are just... And that, what's crazy is that he hasn't needed like a whole lot of yards to be able to do that. Like It's at 550-something yards throwing the ball, but 10 touchdowns. Like He is... He's on another level right now, and this is on the road both times. This is the Chiefs' first game at home. I think the fans are going to be fired gonna up be for crazy. this. It's going to be crazy. Just uh, ludicrous. Jimmy G had three turnovers, three interceptions against the Vikings. Looked a lot better at home against the Lions, but Kansas City ain't the Lions. No, and they're not the Vikings. I mean, they're they're somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle. Defensively, they've given up a whole lot of whole points lot also. Of, yeah, I, I, points. I, think, I think Jimmy G will look just fine. I think he'll put up a lot of points. Can he hang with the Chiefs? I don't know. The uh, Now, the there, line there opened a, up at five and a half. Uh, it has moved up to seven, and, and the analytics all say that it should be right at seven. Yeah, I, there is a part of me that thinks the public is going to be on the Chiefs, and if I was going to make a pick, I would take the 49ers. I think this If is, that gets over a touchdown. But I, like, I th- even think at a touchdown. It, it, you don't feel safe doing it. You don't feel smart doing it. But, but mean, it's the NFL. Ed, everybody is on. Just when everybody goes one way, you just got to go the yeah, other. Yeah, you got to go the other direction. Hold your breath and do it. You got that right. Game number four, Saints at the Falcons. Falcons are a three-point favorite, over and under is 53. Sunday, noon, Fox, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. There's a lot of good noon games this week. Uh, Fox, Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, both teams are one and one. The Falcons have looked considerably better. Uh, and that's that's tough to say, considering what they looked like in, in the first week, but that was against the Eagles. Uh, New Orleans has not been able to run the ball without Mark Ingram. They're averaging 52 yards per game running. This but, is this is a must win for New Orleans. They lose this, they start off 0 and, 0 and 2. 2 in the division. Yeah. And you, with you one of those games can't at home. Do that. Yeah. Uh the Falcons scored 31 against Carolina at home last weekend. Sark appears to have figured out the red zone issue. Now it was only one game, 
So we'll see what happens. But, look, New Orleans is 29th in total defense, giving up 428 yards per game. That could be – look, I, I look for the Falcons and, and really the Saints, too, to score a lot here. Uh, if I was going to make a play on this, I'd probably take the over 53. Uh, I don't know that the analytics actually say that. But, uh, but you know, I think both teams are going to score a lot of points. They're going to score a lot of points. Yeah, you might be right. I, I'm so disappointed on the Saints and what they've done so far this season. They were they were my Super Bowl winner, and and they are just not living up to the hype at all. Um, I think this is a must win. I think they're the most desperate team. Uh, Analytics I'm, say uh, say Atlanta twenty seven twenty three. Okay, so. Four you know, point game. It, it, but but that would hit the under. I still, I, I think the analytics are wrong on that one. Like I just, I, I think four point game. That's that's giving the, uh, that's giving the Falcons the cover. Eh, it's I right mean, at the number though. It's, it's it, right at the number. It, it it it'll be a fun game to bet on. I'm not going to touch it. I'm okay. staying away from that one. It's it's in my gambling picks. <laughs> the. Uh, Game number five, we got the Bengals at the Panthers. The only reason we have this is because the Bengals have looked on fire the first two weeks. Just on fire. The Ravens go out, hold the uh, the Bills to three points. They beat them 47-3. to three. The Ravens come into Cincinnati, and Cincinnati rolls off, what, like 28 to nothing? I like, thought that Ravens defense was going to be good, and Andy Dalton looks like John Elway back there, <laughs> throwing for four <laughs> touchdowns. Moving the ball and to everybody, AJ Green cut them to pieces. Yeah, but Boyd cut them up. John cut them. I mean, they he just everybody was open. Hit Ertz. It just whatever. I mean, I for not Ertz. Like he just didn't care. Yeah. Everybody got fed. The one thing that ticked me off about this game is they were in control. They were rolling. Joe Mixon goes down, gets hurt. They bring him back into the game. Yeah, it was. And now he might dumb. be out for a while. Yeah. Like, what are you doing, man? You're, you're in full control. The Ravens were making a little bit of a move, but that's fine. Like, just keep throwing the ball down the field. They couldn't cover him. No. And A.J. Green looks like a, a different beast this year. And he that's looks weird like to he's say. in better shape than he's ever been, doesn't yeah. he? Isn't this looks like the crazy. best A.J. Green we've ever seen. And and he ain't been bad for a while. Like, it's it's crazy. So so let me ask you a question. Right. Ravens, Ravens just not good? I mean, that was just all the facade? Or do you think... Maybe some reason they just got steamrolled on Thursday night and I, they'll figure it out. I think the Ravens got to beat up on a basically the NFL's version of a high school team. That's right. Like Nathan Peterman playing in that game, he never should have been in that game, and they might have just gotten a little a little comfortable thinking that they were better than they actually are. That's entirely possible. I mean, they got rolled. Yeah, they they really did. Now they uh, came back. They scored some points. The, the game they looked a close, lot closer than but, it was. But at no point in time were the Bengals not in control. Uh, with this one, we didn't go over the uh, the the numbers here. Panthers are a three point favorite at home. The over under is only forty three and a half. They look for this to be a defensive battle. Sunday, twelve p.m. It's on CBS Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, I don't know what to make of this. I, I don't like without Joe Mixon. I'm curious, like how well this team plays. Uh, I I think Joe Mixon was a very l- big, legitimate part of that offense. Oh, I completely agree with that. No, no doubt about it. But Andy Dalton is still playing out of his mind. This will be in my gambling picks. <laughs> uh, let's move into the honorable mentions. Thursday, Jets at the Browns. Browns are a three-point favorite. I think that's going to be a really interesting game. Savior Sam coming to Cleveland. Uh, this is like the bizarro world of the immovable force meets the unstoppable object. Or well, I mean, I it, that backwards. It, it's a it's crazy because like everybody assumed, even the day before the draft, that Cleveland was taking Sam Darnold. Right, like the Haslam's had met with Darnold's like father. You know, they'd had him in for a couple of workouts. It, every, it, all signs pointed to that, and then bam. Yeah, well, they were taking Baker Mayfield. You know, and, and Mayfield hadn't even seen the field, like it, which he shouldn't. You know, it, now if they keep losing games, That's we'll right. see. And, and can't move the offense. Tyrod has got to move the offense yeah. better. Uh, and getting rid of Josh Gordon does not help that. Uh, 
at least you wouldn't think, but yeah, I mean, you never know. Like no. sometimes it's a, a, a addition by subtraction. Correct. Uh, so I think this game's going to be pretty interesting. The Browns need to get this one. They, they need, need to this win, one. and they're favored to win. And yeah. they haven't been favored to win a game in a long time. Yeah, they are favored to win. And the last I was looking, the line is going up. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, so. Next one up. There is no line on this one at Gold Strike right now. There, I would imagine there will be later on in the week once we figure out what's going on with injuries. Uh, the Titans and the Jaguars. Uh, at different spots in Vegas, it is the Jags minus seven. I was just about to say, it should be the Jags minus a lot. Yeah, it's uh, Jags minus seven. The Jags look really, really good right now. We don't know what's going on with Marcus Mariota. The Titans stole one last week, absolutely stole it. Uh, the Texans were not prepared for that ball game somehow. I Like, Bill O'Brien just – he, he could be – First coach first fired. fired, no doubt. Like new, he's thirty one and thirty five. New leader in the clubhouse. Yeah, that's a hundred percent. If if you if I had to if I had to to to, to handicap it, I think he's the new leader in the clubhouse. He got completely out coached last I'll week. I'll tell you this: if the Giants go into Houston, now that'll be a game that you just should not watch. It's not going to be good. It, no, it it. I mean, it might be good if, as if far the as drama goes. Giants go into Houston because that's an elimination game. And win that game. I th- I think Bill doesn't make it to to Monday. Uh, you might be right. I mean, there's there's no point in keeping him around. Uh, but as far as the Titans and Jaguars go, you know the Titans beat the Jags twice last year, and those two wins got them into the playoffs. It, Titans have had the Jags number for for a few years. Well, it's now. a divisional game. Divisional I mean, th- game. Th- this division is kind of weird. I mean, even when the Colts were putrid bad, they just always dominated the Jags. I mean, yeah. the, the 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 Titans. Titans. So, so I mean, up until it's just, up until it's just last year. one of these weird things. This division is is just tough to figure out. Yeah, they. It, I, I do like the coaching for for Tennessee, but I also like the coaching for the Jaguars right now. They no, they Doug, look Doug like they're Marone, on a mission. Doug Marone is is a really good head coach. Uh, next game up, Broncos at the Ravens. The Broncos have looked really good. They're two and zero. Uh, we still don't really know what to make of the Ravens right now, but the Ravens are at home, and their only home game was. <laughs> A, four, a forty-seven to three win over the Bills. Sure, uh, the Broncos have not been on the road yet. They won both of their home games. They uh, they came back and beat the Raiders last week, twenty to nineteen. They uh, they beat Seattle in Week One, twenty-seven twenty-four. You know, Case Keenum looks pretty good. It looks okay. He he struggled at the beginning of that Raiders game. They could not move the offense, and I was just begging, "Give me Chad. Just make the move. Just make the move one time." One time and just see. I don't think they're going to do that. Does he pop? I don't. I well, don't you they, you shouldn't if you're not losing. I mean, if you're two and zero, if you're winning that, the games, don't change something. That's just somebody sitting at home with a little something invested in in in, in machine gun name, Kelly. Name to watch for the Broncos: undrafted free agent, uh, uh, Philip Lindsay. Oh no, that kid is. He's their number yeah. one running back. Yeah, he's awesome. He's, he's getting the number one reps. He's getting more touches. He looks faster. I mean, he. But it, like that is guy. one thing that the Ravens do, and that is they they put the clamps down on on that running game. Yeah, because they did that to so, Joe Mixon last week. How uh, <laughs> at, at least they're known for it, right? <laughs> um, I don't know if if the Ravens actually show up to play, uh, they they could win this game. What is this? A five point spread? Four and a half? Four and a half? Ravens minus four and a half yeah, at home against the Broncos. And, uh, and the over under is forty four, so it's uh, they don't expect a lot of points here. Uh, and I wouldn't expect a lot of points here either. Last game for honorable mention, the Cowboys at the Seahawks. Another elimination-type game. I don't see the Seahawks starting off 0-3. Starting off 0-3. Uh, they're still trying to figure out injury situation on that, so there is no line over at the gold strike right now. There will be by the end of the week. Uh, I have seen it at other places out in Vegas where it is a three-point spread, right? Um, I got it at one and a half on my bookie. Okay, one and a half, uh, and I would imagine it will probably be around one and a half, two points. Yeah, it'll be less than a field goal, more than a pick 'em. Which Giants team is like? I think the Giants or not Giants, or which uh, Cowboys team? I think the Cowboys actually have a pretty good defense, but I I don't know. Are you sure about that? I mean, is is Carolina's offense any good? Are the Giants? Any good on offense? I mean, no, the Giants aren't any good on offense. So I don't think either one of those is really. But I, 
I mean, it, no. you, there's not a lot that you can tell through two weeks of the season. I don't know what to make of this game. I, I don't think that the Seahawks are going to go 0-3, so I would take I, the Seahawks to win. See gambling picks. See, I've, I've yeah. got all of these games I'm betting on. I can't bet on the garbage games. I just can't make myself do it. I can understand it. I can understand it. All right, that's going to wrap it up. That's the uh, NFL big game preview, best game previews. Gambling uh, picks coming up next. We have given you all the information you need on these games to go out and be a winner. Go down to Tunica. Put some action down on these games. You're going to appreciate it. I promise. TunicaTravel.com for more information. You can get our picks over at winningcureseverything.com or you hit that subscribe button on YouTube.